Hello everyone. I think you are all right. Today we are going to talk about congruence class. So we are going to use the concept of equivalence class on a non-empty set, and using that concept we define congruence class. We have already talked about congruence relations uh, on the set of integers, and also we talk about uh, equivalence class uh, over a set of uh, uh, non over a non-empty set, basically. So just le let me recall the what is the definition of equivalence class on a non-empty set. So here is the definition. So if we have a non-empty set, suppose A is a non-empty set. So A is non-empty. Next thing is R is an equivalence relation. So R is an equivalence relation. So which is basically reflexive, symmetric, and transitive uh, relation. So, equivalence relations, equivalence relation on A, then if we have an element, so suppose x belongs to A, so x belongs to A, then we define basically the equivalence class of x. So, equivalence class of x denoted by this sign, so either it is denoted by x bar or box x, Sometimes also we write CL of X, CL for class of X. So what is, uh, how it is defined? So box X or the class of X is the collection of all Y belongs to A such that Y comma X, the order pair Y comma X belongs to the equivalence relation R. So that is how it is defined and we have already talked about this and with some examples in our class. So today we are going to use uh, this concept to define the equivalence class on the set of integers. So let us do it. So first of all let me erase all this part. So here we go. So what was the equivalence, uh, sorry, what was the congruence relations on the set of integers? So let me first uh, repeat that. So we are going to define the congruence class. So what we know till now. So we know that, suppose we know that, so we know that, sorry for my head thing. So we know that if z is the set of all integers, so suppose z is minus 2, minus 1, and going on in this way 0, 1, 2 and so on. So j is, or is the set of all the integers and we define a relation. So we define already defined such type of relation in our class. So uh, if we define, so because j is a relation, so it is a subset of j cross j. So it is a collection of all other pair a, b and a, b are elements of j and sub a minus b is divisible by 3 is divisible by 3 okay and we already have seen in our class that r is an equivalence relation so we have already seen that r r is an equivalence relation so it is an equivalence relation on J. Okay. Because this is an equivalence relation on the set of integers, so what we can define? We define the equivalence class for this equivalence relation. So for example, if I take because we take go with one by one. So what will be the equivalence class of zero? Because zero is an integer. So since we know since since zero belongs to j so zero because zero is an integer so what will be the equivalence class of zero so who are the elements in this class so equivalence class of zero contain so it contain all such integers so it contains all such integers such that zero comma y belongs to y zero comma y belongs to this relation this relation r which means which means that is the collection of all integers such that 0 minus y, so 0 minus y is 
divisible by is divisible by 3. Am I right? Okay. So, who are the elements of this class? So, suppose is 0 is an element of this set. So, let us see that. So, if it is an element of this set, then 0 minus 0 obviously divisible by 3. So, now, now what we know? Now, 0 minus 0 is 0. Obviously, this is divisible by 3. Is divisible by 3. Divisible by 3. So, obviously, 0 belongs to the class of 0. Next, does 1 belongs to this class? So, let us see. If 1 belongs to this class, then 0 minus 1 must be divisible by 3. So, what is 0 minus 1? 0 minus 1 is minus 1, which is not divisible by 3. So, my 1 is not in the class of 0. Does 2 is this in this class? So, let us check. If it is in this class, then 0 minus 2 must be divisible by 3. So, 0 minus 2 is minus 2. It does not divisible by 3. So, let us check. 3 is in the class of 0. So, 0 minus 3 is minus 3. And we know that minus 3 is divisible by 3. So, 3 belongs to the class of 0. So, in this way, let me erase this part as the above part. So, let me erase this part. So, which part I will choose label? Just let me erase this whole this part. So, we know that 0 belongs to this set, 3 belongs to this set, and does 4 belong to this set? So, what do we know? 0 minus 4 is minus 4, and this is does not divisible by 3. So, 4 is not in the class of 0. Similarly, 5 is not in this class. Does 6 in this class? So, let us check. What happens? 0 minus 6 x minus 6, which is divisible by 3. So, 6 belongs to the class of 0. Similarly, you can, I think you have to find a pattern. 9 will be in the class of 0, then 12 will be in the class of 0, and so on. If I go in a negative direction, so what do we know? 0 minus minus 3 is 3, divisible by 3. So, minus 3 belongs to the class of 0. Similarly, if we find that minus 6 also belongs to the class of 0. So, minus 6 belongs to the class of 0 and so on. So, if I write in more compact form, what we can write? So, class of 0, so class of 0 contain, so let me erase this part. So, class of 0 basically, who are the elements of class 0? So, class 0, so let me write it down. So, class 0 contain 0 plus minus 3 plus minus 6 plus minus 9 and so on. So, basically if I write in this form then it is the collection of all elements 3 into n where n is any integer. So, for n equals to 0 we get 0, for n equals to 1 we get 3, n equals to minus 1 we get minus 3, n equals to 2 we get 6 in this way. So, now we are going to find what is the class of 1. So, we have seen that class of 0 is 3 n. So, let us check. Well, first of all, just erase, let me erase this part. So, class of, we now going to find the class of 1. Okay. So, who are the class of 1? So, first let me write down the definition. So, class of 1 contain all such integers such that 1 minus y is divisible by what? Is divisible by 3, obviously. Is divisible by 3. Okay. So, let us check who are the elements of this class. So, does 1 belongs to this class? So, first of all, let us check. The 0 belongs to this class. 1 minus 0 is 1. So, does not divisible by 3? So, 1 is, uh, 0 is not in this class. So, 0 does not belongs to the class of 1. Does 1 belongs to this class? So, 1 minus 1 is 0 and which is divisible by 3. Yeah, it is divisible by 3. So, 1 belongs to the class of 1. Does 2 belongs to this class? So, let us check. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. That is not divisible by 3. So, 2 is not in this class. Similarly, 
just take 3 is in this class or not. 1 minus 3 is minus 2, so that's not divisible by 3, so that's not in this class. So 3 is not in this class, so let's take 4 is in this class. So 1 minus 4 is minus 3, yeah, it's divisible by 3. So 4 belongs to the class of 1. So I think you have find the pattern. Next will be next element will be 5. No, 5, 1 minus 5 is minus 4. That's not divisible by 3. 6, it's also not there. 7, 1 minus 7 is minus 6. Yeah, 7 will be there. 7 belongs to the class of 1. Next, 10 will be there and so on. Let's check for the negative values. So what happened if I take minus 1? So just let me erase the upper portion. So I think you are familiar with this notation now. So let me erase the upper portion. So I am sorry for taking your time to erase my whole lecture over here. So just let us see what happened next. So what happened if I take minus 1? So 1 minus minus 1 is 1. Sorry, 2. Yeah, thank you. It is 2. So it will be 2. So that 2 belongs to this 2 divisible by 3? No, 2 is that's not divisible by 3. So minus 1 not in that place. 1 minus minus 2 is 3, yeah. So it's divisible by 3, so minus 2 belongs to the class of 1. So what happened? If I take minus 3, it's 4. So next, it will be take 1 minus minus 5, yeah. It's 6 divisible by 3 and so on. So next element, minus 5. So what happened after that? It will be after that, yeah, minus 8 will be there minus 8 will be class of 1. So if I write in this form, more formal way, more compact way, what happened? So class of 1 contain the elements 1, next 4, next what we know 7, 10 and in this so on. And if I take the negative value, what we have? We get for the negative value minus 2. This is not a good way of writing but let me write it for there, minus 5, minus 8 and so on. So if I write more compact form, so you can see that, so let me write it down, so it will be 3n plus minus 1 or plus minus 3n plus 1. What happened? Actually it is going to have, so what will going to happen if I take in this way? So what is 4? 4 is 3 plus 1. Seven. 3 into 2 plus 1, so you can see that 3n plus 1, something like that. What happened if negative direction, minus 3 plus 1, minus 2, minus 3 into 2 plus 1, minus 5, minus 3 into 3 plus 1, minus 8, so it will be in this form of, which form it is? I think you have already find out, yeah, it will be 3n plus 1, where the n, sorry for that comma, so n belongs to the set of integers. So for n equals to 1, we get 4, n equals to 2, we get 7. For n equals to minus 1, we get minus 2. For n equals to minus 2, we get minus 5. Yeah, you are right. So in this way, we get the class of minus, uh, sorry, class of 1. So let's check what happened to class of 2. So start with the class of 2. So we have find out class of 0, class of 1. Now we have in a position to work with class of 2. I think you have already um, familiar with this type of thing. So class of 2, yeah, yeah, some of you are right basically. I think you are right already. If you are not, just pause the video and think over it. So class of 2 is collection of all integers. So all y belongs to j such that 2 minus y is divisible by 3. Yeah, it's divisible by 3. So what will be element over here? Does 0 belong to the set? 2 minus 0 is 2, does not belong divisible by 3. So two, 0 is not in the class of 2. Does 1? No, 1 will be not. Because 2 minus 1 is 1, again, does not divisible by 3. So 2 minus 2 is 0, divisible by 3. So 2 in the class of 2. Next element will be, what will be? Yeah, 3. No, 2 minus 3 is 
minus 1, no. 2 minus 4 is minus 2 again, no. 2 minus 5, yeah, minus 3. Divisible by 3, yeah, you are right. So next element will be 5. Next element will be 8 or something else, yeah, 8. Very good. And so on. If I go in the negative direction, what happens? 2 minus minus 1 is 3, divisible by 3, very good. 2 minus minus 2 is 4, that's not divisible by 4. Next element, 2 minus minus 3, next we get 5, no, 2 minus minus 4 is 6, obviously divisible by 3, so next element is minus 4. So minus 4 belongs to a class of 2. So if, you, if I write it more compact form, so what happened? Just first, let me erase the whole part over here. So just if you are, just pause the video for a few seconds and work for yourself. You know the uh, best way to learn mathematics to do mathematics. So you have to do it, pause the video for a few seconds and look it over and over. Uh, so let me write it more compact form. It will be a collection two, next is five, eight, so on. In a negative element, it will be minus one, minus what happened? Minus 3. Yeah, because 2 minus 3 is minus 3. It's 5. No, no. Then minus 3 will not be there. Very good. So minus 3 will be not be there. Minus 4. Yeah, it will be minus 4. So it is minus 4. Next is minus 7. 6. 8. Yeah, it will be minus 8. So if it is minus 8, so 2 minus minus 8 is 10. No, so that's not work. 6, 2 minus 7, yeah, it's minus 7 is 9, so it will be minus 7. Next is minus 10 and so on. So if I write more compact form, what we can write? We can write in this way. So it's because we can easily find it out. This will be the collection of all 3n plus 2 and Sorry for again, sorry for the comma. So the comma will be not there. Comma will be not there. So again it will be n is any set of n from the set of integers. So for n equals to zero, we get two. For n equals to one, we get two three into one plus two, which is five. For n equals to two, we get three into two is six plus two, we get eight. For n equals to minus 1, we get minus 1. For n equals to minus 2, we get minus 6 plus 2 minus 4 and in this way. So that's how the class 2 is defined. Let's check the class of 3. So let's check the class of 3. So what happened with the class of 3? So first let me erase the whole part from there and we will just rewrite freshly what we get till now then we are going to find the class of 3 so we we have what we have find basically so we have find the class of 0 so class of 0 is the collection of all 3 n so n is any integer class of 1 so class of 1 is the collection of all 3 n plus 1 n belongs to the set j class of 2 is 3n plus 2 n belongs to the set j so if you look at the pattern what is the class of 3 class of 3 is again 3n plus 3 so n belongs to z so now 3n plus 3 also can be written as 3n some integer k yeah can i write this out yeah, obviously we can write this out because that's also divisible by 3 because 3n three plus 3 is 3 into n plus 1. So n plus 1 is another integer. So we can write in this form 3 into k. k is another integer. So this is basically the class of 0. So what happened with class of 4? It will become basically 3n plus 4 and n belongs to the set of integers and what we can write 4 4 can be written as 3 plus 1 and n belongs to the set of integers 
so this is again become something like that 3k plus 1 similarly as we have done for the class of 3 so 3 and plus 1 is the class of 1 basically yeah sorry here we have k so class of 1 again so class of 5 will be yeah it's equals to class of 2 so what happened if I take go to the negative direction so if I go to the negative direction so minus 1 so what happened with minus 1 so let rewrite it again so if I go to the negative direction so what happened with the class of minus 1 so class of minus 1 let me write with uh, different things so class of minus 1 is can be written at what we can write it's going to happen so just uh, because it is a negative direction start with zero sum so minus 1 and minus 1 is becomes 0 so minus 1 in this case so is divisible by 3 so minus 1 next is minus 2 is what we get so we get 1 so that's not work so that's not divisible by 3 so minus 2 are not in the set minus 1 minus 3 is 2 not again in the set minus 1 minus 4 is 5 or 3 yeah 3 is divisible by 3 so minus 4 in this set so it will become minus 4 next it will become minus 7 because minus 1 minus 7 is minus 1 minus of minus 7 it give us plus 6 which is divisible by 3 so if I go in the positive direction what we get minus 1 plus 1 is no it's not what yeah thank you minus 1 minus of 1 what we get minus 2 that's not divisible by 3 so that will be not in the set so next minus 1 so let me erase this part first so let me erase this part so what we get actually so here we go so minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3 so 2 will be in this state so next minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 that's not divisible by 3 so minus 3 is not in the set minus 1 minus 4 minus 5 again not in the set minus 1 minus 5 minus 6 so it is in the set so 5 will be there so so on so actually you can see that so this is become something like that so it's become if I write more complex form so just let me write it down so it's become something like 3n plus 2 so n belongs to z why because for n equals to 0 what we get n equals to 0 we get 3n plus 2 equals to 3 into 0 plus 2 we get 2 for n equals to 1 we get 5 for n equals to minus 1 we get 3 into minus 1 plus 2 we get minus 1 so you can see that 3 n plus 2 so which is the class with my 2 yeah very good so it's class with 2 so similar way minus 2 will be yeah class with 1 similar way similar way with going on in positive and negative direction so what we have learned from there we learned that for the relation for the equivalence relation we define is a congruence equivalence relations and for that we get only this three the first three so this first three zero one and two they are only the three distinct equivalence class when we define the relations on the set of integers in this way so what was the relation let me remind you again so when when on the set of integers we define the relation r which is the subset of z cross z collection that a minus b is divisible is divisible by 3 so divisible by 3 so when it is divisible by 3 so we have seen that there are only three distinct class 0 1 and 2 so they are only three distinct class so what we do now we take the collections of this 
these elements so we we'll take the collection a is 0 1 and the class 2 because we have taken the class in such a way that they are the class defined clearly what are the definition of this class and we are taking in this such a way so that collection is well defined collection because we are taking the collection of all class of of the relations of the equivalence relation defined in this way so a is become a set and we're going to define this set with the notation z3 3 for this relation that a minus b is divisible by 3 for that we write the 3 and z for the integers that's how it is defined so this become a set so what we now now do we define a uh, uh, position compositions on the state z3 so we define the composition and we look uh, in next lecture we're going to check the composition is uh, the binary composition or not next we check the, uh, with composition z3 with that compositions that we're going to define will form a group or not that is our next step okay we'll talk it uh, in our next video Thank you for watching.